Welcome back, Brick Maniacs. I'm here with Landon, and we are once again going over the minifigure of the month, which for the month of February is the World War II British paratrooper, or as you said, para. Yeah, that's right. So, obviously, we've got a lot going on with this figure. Brick arms not included. Um, where do you want to start? You want to work from the bottom up and, sure. and just kind of go over some of the, the specs? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, again, World War II British paratrooper, um, Operation Market Garden, somewhere around there. Um, and so this is kind of going to go nicely with some upcoming kits, kind of coinciding with everything. Um, you can create some really, really cool battlefields, um, some cool dioramas to come, I hope. So, um, yeah, starting off, uh, you just have those basic um, ammo boots. Um, that's what they call them. And very similar. That's kind of what I like about, about a lot of the British gear um, is it works across a ton of different... Um, Units, different different uh, soldier types. I mean, the ammo, ammo pouches. Um, they work for the Sten gun. They work for the SMLE. Just a, a bunch of different weapons that those uh, ammo pouches use. So uh, likewise, these boots, um, some standard boots that he'd be wearing, um, along with those uh, gaiters, um, and those are dyed in that Blanco KG3 color, um, and just to kind of get that that historical. Um, that color is tough to get in in. Printing, so it was, uh, we're glad that we're nailing that down finally. Moving on to the uh, the trousers, he's got. Uh, they're very similar to um, the standard infantry trousers. With uh, there's kind of two major exceptions to that. Uh, you have a really big oversized pocket. Um, I don't know if that was added to the existing pair. These are probably made from the ground up, I guess. But um, so you have a really oversized pocket um, just to. You know, additional equipment when they're jumping. Is that the one on the left leg there? Correct. Okay. Correct. Um, and then the, the pocket on the right you, that was uh, standard for the other the regular infantry, um, and that's just been a, it's a, it's just a little pocket there again. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have that we have that nice wool texture, uh, simulated wool texture, um, going all around uh, the trousers there, um, which it's kind of a, it's a nice subtle thing. Um, I'm trying not to, I'm trying to dial it in, not go too overboard with some of these simulated textures and just sort of fabric folds. Um, and that, that's always kind of tricky because if you go too light, it almost looks like it's not intentional. And if you go too dark, it's like way too much. So Is that kind of just part of the process of figuring out those UV printers and some of the quirks mm -hmm. that, that, that come with them? Yeah, I mean, it, how it looks on the screen is often very, very different from how it prints. Right. Um, so that's, that's, it's been nice to come back and forth with the printers to dial in these colors and um, just different shapes and how they print. Uh, even certain areas on the minifigure um, print differently just based on how they're, you know, the legs have recesses, the arms, the elbows, everything. Just interesting. So you got to play around with a lot of different things. Moving up, uh, again, you have the ammo pouches. Uh, I'll get rid of the stun gun here. Um, yeah, shout out, cool brick, uh, brick arms stun gun there. Um, it's a, kind of been one of my favorites over the over time. So even in real life, the stun gun is kind of cool. It's okay. a very, very uh, um, simple gun, mm -hmm. mass produced. Um, it's cool. I like you it. can see why a paratrooper would want to jump yeah, or something yeah. like that. It's, it's just, just small, compact. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, moving up to the Denison smock. So this is the second pattern Denison smock um, with that real iconic brush stroke camouflage pattern. Um, and that's kind of like, even up until nowadays in some of the more modern British camouflage patterns, you can see these kind of brush stroke patterns. Even if they have kind of a, a British version of uh, multi-cam now. Um, you can still see some brush strokes in there, and you go back to other camo patterns in between. Um, so this is kind of what started it all. Uh, the first pattern, Denison Smock, they actually would paint it with these giant brooms. Like, so you, it's like two different, uh, uh, it's like red and, and green kind of. Interesting. And um, when they overlapped, you'd get like a third color. Um, so we have that simulated here. It's like a darker, almost like a purple, really, really deep, rich color. Um, and that's here and there. Um, but it's mostly red and green. Um, and, and then the, uh, what else are we doing? Um, this is originally on a tan minifigure. Mm -hmm. um, so what I was finding is we, we originally did it with a dark tan, uh, and I thought it was just getting a little bit too dark um, compared to what the actual um, Denison smock was. I think it, mm -hmm. the, the real one's pretty saturated, um, so it's a bit more on the, on the olive-ish, yellowish color. So I, I thought starting with a tan base color let me get that a bit more accurate color. So there's some more color shifting going on all over this guy. Um, was it a challenge at all to kind of find out what the original uniforms would have looked like when they were wearing them versus what a World War II oh, relic yeah, yeah. of that would have looked like? That's always the, the a huge challenge with looking at gear. Um, 
so oftentimes, again, going back to like these uh, the leg wraps, the gaiters, mm -hmm. um, and even just the the web gear. Um, a lot of times, when you look up, um, when you see if you see reenactors or if you see maybe action figures, um, they'll have them in this like bright tan color, um, and that's the color they come from the factory when they're originally produced. But they would in the field they would apply. Um, just it was like blanco, it's called, mm -hmm. um, to clean it and to color it this green color, but um, you know, new from the factory, it's tan. So people, I think, just sort of assume that it's tan. Or even you know, as it as this blanco wears off, it gets lighter colored. Mm -hmm. So when you're seeing these these, I mean, they might be original uh, World War II um, just pieces. Uh, they would look a lot lighter, but that's not necessarily the color that they were at the time. So I'm trying to recreate what this guy would look like in the field. In the field, yeah. So. That's always, and then, you know, um, let's say like the jacket, that if you see like a, an original piece, it's probably, you know, it's like 60 plus years old and mm -hmm. it's, it's faded in the sun. It's everything is, you know, it's faded. Um, and uh, so this is trying to get the, a bit more saturated colors compared to what you know, you'd see. Um, yeah. Um, what else? What else? Uh, new artwork on the um, Pattern 37 web gear. Um, before I just had some simple squares representing the belt buckle. I, I took it up on a little notch here to mm -hmm. represent the two different kind of class. I don't remember exactly what it's called, but um, new belt buckles. Um, and what else is new on the neck? He's got this uh, netting. Um, it's kind of they, they, it's like a veil. They sometimes put it over their back or cover their gear up with it. It's just cam it's camouflage. Hmm. Um, so that's cool. How much of a trial and error process is it keeping those lines clean yeah. when you're dealing with kind of a new camo that uh, the, the camo itself looks rather splattered in, in like sure, you said, brush sure. stroke, but then the, obviously the webbing mm -hmm. is, you know, is, is clean and sharp mm -hmm. lines. Yeah. Um, I, I get trial and error. Uh, I've done this camouflage before and this is a, a refinement of that camouflage. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess the challenge is identifying what's like the iconic um, piece of a camouflage pattern. I mean, really the point of camouflage is to kind of be muddled and, and blend in. Mm -hmm. So that's, a, that's kind of a challenge, like what's, what's the one distinguishing piece of it, because that's sort of counterintuitive to what it is. Um, but again, <laughs> being that brush stroke, um, you can really see right in the middle, I kind of I emphasized it right in the middle of that Denison smock, there is that brush stroke that I thought was sort of the, char the, the, the primary characteristic of this camouflage pattern. So. Um, that's definitely a trial and error process. You can see on the previous version of this guy, it's it's a it's a bit more simple version of that that brush stroke, but mm -hmm. it's still it's still there. Um, Interesting. I, I just think this is this is kind of I was really happy with how this one turned out. Yeah, it's absolutely. Definitely an evolution of a previous pattern. Um, moving up onto the head, um, we have this awesome awesome 360 printed all the way around the head, uh, seamless pattern here. So he's got really buzzed down close to a hair. You can see a little bit of a stubble all the way around. Mm -hmm. And then that um, four-point harness um, that the paratroopers had. So that really kept that helmet snug on their head when they're um, jumping, obviously. Um, and that's cool. It's just going all the way around. That, that integrates really nicely with our brand new um, helmet here, our paratrooper netted helmet, British paratrooper helmet. Um, this is made in-house at Brickmania, designed in-house, everything. Um, and this thing turned out fantastic. It's got I'm a nice kidding. two tone, you can, the darker helmet underneath uh, with a little bit lighter tone netting on top of that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just, that's just kind of the iconic piece. Um, this, is, this is one of my favorite parts about this figure actually, is this new helmet. So it's exciting that we're able to produce something. Just you know, of this quality. figure was previously kind of unattainable to be able to do it the correct way. Right. Yeah, I mean, there wasn't, Brick Arms doesn't have a British paratrooper helmet. It's similar to the Falschmager helmet, mm -hmm. um, but that one's a little, it's got a flatter top and straighter sides. And this is really, really like, a, it's kind of like a salad bowl almost. Mm -hmm. um, a little bit more oval <laughs> shape, uh, just to match the human head. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess if it was a minifigure, it would be a perfect cylinder, wouldn't it? Right. It would literally be a salad bowl shape. No, we have, we have a nice, um, like matching a little bit of a slight oval to it. Um, this is, I think, just a really good representation of this helmet. Well, and how big of a challenge is that? I mean, obviously, the you know the Lego minifig is as nice as it is for displaying artwork doesn't exactly match the shape of a oh, human yeah. too terribly well. Right. Um, and so, like creating something like that, I mean, is it just kind of an eye test? Yeah, it's it's trying to. I mean, again, you look at the minifigure head as a perfect example. This dude's head is like three feet wide in and real flat life. on top. Yeah, <laughs> it's like. <laughs> the, it, 
it's like how much do you need to account for the shape of the head versus how much does do you want it to match the real life helmet? Mm -hmm. I kind of like maybe going a little bit closer to the real life helmet shape. Mm -hmm. um, so it is just it's eyeballing it. That's kind of part of the the I don't know experimentation, the artistry of it, I guess, um, to find out what looks good, what functions nice, uh, and what kind of captures that. Um, the actual piece. Mm -hmm. So how long has this been in the pipeline? How long have you been wanting to do a figure, a British paratrooper figure? I mean, we, we've, we've made it, I think this is this third one now that we've done. Okay. Um, so it's like we got, we've made them before, mm -hmm. um, but uh, I guess just, just developing new skills okay. in-house, um, um, just new ways of making stuff um, let, lets us take this up just to a, a higher level than we ever have been able to. Um, there's there's Quite frankly, nothing else out there like this figure that you, you just can't get anything like it. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's a combination of of it's a huge team effort that any one of us individually we couldn't we couldn't do it. Um, but combining different departments at Brickmania here lets us create this insane, um, awesome uh, minifigure. So quite cool. the undertaking by the creatives here at Brickmania. Mm -hmm. So this will be the minifigure of the month for the month of February. Um, and because February is a short month, uh, we are going to cap the production of this figure, I believe, at 800. Yeah. Um, so it will be a little bit more exclusive than uh, previous minifigures of the month. Uh, but that's understandable because it's a short month. And this is also quite the undertaking to, to create. Yeah. Um, but definitely a figure also that, you know, you can't pick up just one of because right. who has just one paratrooper yeah. in there? So, you know, unless he unless he dropped in, in yeah. seriously the wrong spot, um, you know, it's definitely one that you gotta you gotta get a squad of, which is yeah. which is very very cool. Anything else you want to cover on here? No. Um, again, one of my favorite figures. I, I think they're uh, each time getting to take on these premium figures, um, learning something new. It's been a lot of fun to see the evolution of the Brickmania uh, British paratrooper. Yeah. So it's been a lot of fun. Very, very cool. Available online on BrickMania.com right now. We've already sold through a bunch of them, uh, so get them while they last here for the month of February. Uh, once again, production is going to be capped at 800 of them. This helmet is just yeah. awesome. This whole figure is fantastic. Pick up some brick arms to go with it. There's uh, qu uh, quite a variety that'll, that'll work for you to outfit your squad, but uh, thanks for joining me. Later. Thank you. Cool. Thanks for watching.